hi welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel i am om in today's video i want to talk about what you need to know about the fruit of the holy spirit the first thing i would like you to know is that speaking in tongues is not one of the fruit of the holy spirit scripture clearly says that by their fruit you shall know them if somebody wants to know the evidence that you have the holy spirit it's possible for someone to say because i speak in tongues la 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 la, la. or you speak in tongues that's not the evidence the evidence is in the fruit and most times we don't talk about this so much we don't talk about this loudly we are too low on talking about how important the fruit of the spirit is in the life of believers we can't risk looking like the world when we say we have the holy spirit of god we can't risk looking like the world when we say that god is living inside of us when we say that we trust god and that is why we see so many people who are prophets pastors and they have the gift of doing miracles and all of that but then when you check their life doesn't even look like they know God. And it's the reason for a lot of deception in today's society and today's world. Because a lot of people have elevated, even in the church, they have elevated the aspect of the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. Of course, there's a place for the gift of the Spirit, which is to edify the church, to encourage the church, to build up the church. But then, the fruit is what shows, is what represents Christ, that we are His. Doing evangelism, the true evangelism is your life. You are the Bible. You bearing the fruit of the Spirit is what, is what people can look at, the virtues that you actually bring up, and they'll be like, I want to be like this man. I want to be like that woman. What do you need to know about the fruit of the Holy Spirit? And there are nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. And one thing I want to point out again is that the fruit of the Holy Spirit are not nice gestures. Anybody can put up nice gestures and look good and treat people nice and all of that. Anybody can do that. That's not hard to do. But these are fruits that the Holy Spirit actually bears when we align with Him, when we surrender to Him, when we allow Him to lead us. So these are fruits, and fruit is a result of livelihood. Just like a tree, a tree that is well nourished and then is watered and grows well and the branches are healthy will bring up fruits. But if the tree is not nourished, and it's not the branches are not healthy it cannot bring up any fruit a mango tree bears mango fruit that's why from the fruit you can know the tree apple tree apple fruit orange tree orange fruit we that bear the image of god we are supposed to bear the fruit of the holy spirit not to walk in the works of the flesh i will start with the first fruit but the fruit of the spirit is love that's the first fruit the reality is that this love mentioned here as a fruit of the Spirit is agape, the unconditional love. And we can speak as humans and say that it's not possible to have unconditional love as a human. Like I've been in a place that people have the argument that it is totally not possible to have agape love. Of course, with men, it is impossible. But with God, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can have unconditional love for people. Because we as humans, we don't have the capacity to have unconditional love. We can only have conditional love, which is, I love you for you to love me back. If I love you, don't love me back, that becomes a problem. But then, through the Holy Spirit, we can love someone without expecting anything. That is the unconditional love through the Holy Spirit. And that's when you can know that it is possible. First Corinthians 13 states about this love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is selfless. It's not boastful. It's not prideful. It doesn't seek its own good. It seeks the good of others. Now, that is what that love portrays. And from that love, you can see how it springs up other fruits of the Spirit. Because the Bible says fruit is not fruit. There's no ace. You can read Galatians 5 verse 22. It said, but the fruit without an ace of the Spirit is, not are. So it starts with love, which means you need to understand and know the love of God. Because we always do say, if you do not have something, you cannot give out. You can't give what you do not have. So if I do not have unconditional love, how? Mm, how can I give unconditional love without having one? If I am believing God that I need to do something to deserve the love of God, to deserve God looking at me twice, to deserve God blessing me, I cannot know how to bear the fruit of the Spirit because I am still walking in the works of the flesh. I'm still being legalistic. It is until I understand that, in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son as a propitiation for our sins, that God loves us unconditionally, not asking for us to love him. But then his love then compels us for us to want to love him because his love is so abundant. So the reality is when we come to understand the love of God and accept the love of God, 
that love through the Holy Spirit now start brooding in our heart. And we cannot help but give out unconditional love to other people. This is not. This doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect at this. But it means that every time you're conscious of, I want to give unconditional love, just like God loves you. So which means when you get married, you can give your spouse unconditional love because it is a safe space that you can do that. And that doesn't mean that you are naive. That doesn't mean that you are forgetful that people would want to use you for giving unconditional love. But because it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it is not from your efforts that you are trying to do this. It is the Holy Spirit guiding you through his wisdom to just love people. And the point I would say here is because it is unconditional love, it is not selective. It doesn't select because you like this person though you love them. You give them unconditional love. So the other person that you do not like, you can't love them unconditionally. No, it will not be selective. It will be like the way you treat this person you treat the other person the same way and you treat the next person the same way. Now, when you get to like someone, they can really see you for who you are and you can pour that love in full measure to them. But everybody can see you that this is who this person is. This person just has love. This person is a patient person. This person is a kind person. The second fruit is joy. And I will go a little faster on this. Joy there means calm delight, cheerfulness. It does not mean excitement or happiness. Happiness is a part of it, but happiness is not the basic root of it the root is you just being cheerful and as a fruit you realize that the fruit of a tree is enjoyed by others not the tree itself which means the the tree is happy to represent itself the tree is satisfied with just bearing fruit because that is its work it keeps bearing fruit and then the fruit is enjoyed by others which means for you to bear the fruit of joy through the Holy Spirit, you are this person that when you enter the room, that room lights up. You don't need to crack a joke. It is just a matter of presence. Your presence just makes people feel calm. It makes people feel joyful. It makes people feel okay. Like you enter a room, it lights up. There's a calm delight. There's a cheerfulness. You could step into any place and that joy, because it is contagious, it just gets shared. People were having sadness and sad moments. Your presence being invited into that place by the Holy Spirit in you, that calm delight is being spread. And then sadness just drops from somebody's heart. The smile you give just drops someone's anxiety. The smile you give makes a depressed person stop being depressed. But not on the area of you being a mean Christian. That you walk into a room, somebody, everybody will just be like, oh, hey, this one has come again. Oh, that is not you bearing the fruit of the spirit. That is far from the fruit of the spirit. Meanness is not part of the fruit of the spirit. And this is not like start becoming nice. It's different from being nice. It is a joy that the Holy Spirit actually grows because you align with him. And the other word I would put to that joy is you exude positivity. The next fruit is peace. The word for peace in the Greek is Irene. It means security, safety, prosperity, tranquility. Peace of God in you gives you emotional intelligence that you are a stable person and you are regulated. Yeah, you are more regulated than others because of the presence of the peace of God in you. That you can get into a situation and then everything is not okay, chaos, chaotic, Everybody is shouting and ranting, but because you are there, you can be regulated and you will not kind of be jumping around in your emotions, but you are regulated. You understand things and you can solve issues. That's just what I get about the peace of God from my experience. That emotional regulation that you are not overtaken in your emotion. There's kind of this balance to you. There's kind of this stability to you and there is safety which others will enjoy that fruit by when they are around you. Even when everything is not okay, they feel the sense of safety. When they are around you, they feel a sense of security. When they are around you, they feel the sense of tranquility. And this is beyond peace of the mind. It is a peace that is transcendent, that because people are around you, that safety is there, that security is there. If you are in a relationship, your partner can really feel that security and safety because you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit called peace. The next one is patience. Patience, the word I saw is longanimity. I've not heard this word before, but what I was studying, I saw the word. It is 
also another word is fortitude which is the strength of mind that helps one to endure adversity with courage it means you are someone that can be with others it means you are someone that can tolerate others of course it's not like this being tolerating people to a point that they can use you and do anything to you not that of course you're working in wisdom but then you can tolerate people you can give people grace you can be patient with people you can be patient with people that are not thinking like you people that are not like you and you can go study this but i'm just sharing what you need to know about the fruit of the spirit this is what represents you as a child of god because this is actually the picture of jesus walking on earth the patience he exuded with people you would imagine that if jesus didn't have patience him talking with the pharisees would have been in a full out full blown out war because he had power to destroy all of them at once he had power to have dealt with them and it is very crucial for you to note that if you are someone in a position of power you need to have patience you really need this fruit of patience you really need the fruit of the spirit all of it because you can be mean instead of being joyful because you can hate instead of loving because you can do anything you can destroy people with your power instead of being patient and being able to tolerate them and work with them because everybody has a different ability the other thing about patience is that patience is not about how long you wait but how good mannered you are waiting are you waiting with a good manner that's why you can say that joseph had patience because he was so good mannered in the prison even when things were not working well even when the time was as if time was against him he stayed in the prison for a long time and the person he interpreted dreams for did not remember him and that did not make him bitter when you are waiting in god it is also slowness in avenging wrongs that's how that fruit is being communicated to others you are slow to avenge wrongs and i will speak on myself here because being in a relationship i've discovered that sometimes when my partner does something i feel like doing it back to them i feel like avenging maybe it not it doesn't have to be something big but you feel like giving someone the same energy they give you and over time recently god has been really nudging my heart not to return back energy for energy mm. eye for an eye <laughs> you know like it is not the fruit of the spirit avenging wrong because they, they they gave you that energy so give it back to them they can give you a wrong energy you avoid them you don't have to give them a wrong energy you can give them the opposite of what they give you it doesn't matter it hurts it, it's not going to be sweet to your flesh but then it's going to be helpful to your spirit because it's not going to drop a bit of bitterness in your heart it's not going to drop things and get you to a place of starting to think about things you're not supposed to think about or getting to a place of anxiety that you're not supposed to have it's going to really help you because the fruit of the spirit does not just help other people it helps you too i know in the condition of a tree the tree does not really enjoy of its fruit but then when it comes to the holy spirit you enjoy of the fruit and then others enjoy you too because when you become a patient person and then when it becomes a part of you you can really enjoy it and i'm praying to god to help me to be slow in avenging wrongs for this fruit of the holy spirit let me bend on him so that because this is practical thing it's not something like oh i've arrived it is practical that in the moment when you're supposed to return energy for energy the holy spirit tells you no drop that drop your phone don't make that call don't drop that text ah, i'm so good at <laughs> You do something to me i'm like i know how to write i can really just pour by two pages for you of how i really feel give you a piece of my mind and how i feel and then maybe because i like to gain clarity i like to be clear i like to be understood and then god is teaching me things in this season to be patient that it, it doesn't really matter if, if i get if, I, if i'm understood and then there's still no peace so what is the essence of being understood because i can then pour out my mind to be understood and then at the end of the day what happens it doesn't help me it is a level of coming to a place of constancy of saying i'm going to remain who i am and whatever you do is not going to change who i am and if you'd like to watch the second part of this video because i don't want to take it too long for us to talk about the other fruit of the spirit subscribe to this channel and like this video and wait for it the next week when it is released and do not forget to drop your comments on this video and let me know what you think thank you so much for watching today's video and remain blessed